every one of us in Nigeria we have one thing or the other that we are bothered about. Me, I'm really worried about this economic challenge that is facing everybody in Nigeria. The economic challenge is so much that at times people even lose direction. You know, people are looking for more money so much that they now sit down, they become social media uh, journalists or social media comedian. Especially those journalists, those ones are number one liars. At times, if you look at what the topic is and they start shouting and you look at what they are saying, you'll be saying, this is rubbish. Tinobu did this. Obi did this. They don't get new evidence. These people are wasters of people's data. I used to tell people, don't forward, don't share what they are doing. All they are doing is that so that you, they can have enough shares for Facebook or YouTube to be able to recognize them. They don't have any good content. Some people who are gullible, who do not know what they are doing, follow them blindly and become terrible like them. Anyway, let me leave that one. A MFLA has not dropped enough money in the economy. Although tension is being easing gradually, all these POS that are collecting uh, 300 for 1,000, 400 for 1,000, some of them have come back to 100 naira per 1,000. And gradually we are going back to 100 naira for 5,000. But that may be like in two, three weeks' time. Lagos State has decided that they want to uh, increase their atmosphere again. But we cannot sit on that because it's still too early. Nigerian Railway recently announced that from Ijoko to Ido, they want to increase it to 700 Naira, which is not acceptable for now, because when they increase it to 450 Naira or so, 400, it was a, a, a less than that. They doubled the price because of COVID-19. And that's why they increased it. That time they said two people will be sitting in the seat to increase. Uh, it did not take time before they revert back. People were not people were sitting on the side. The price did not come down. And suddenly the crisis now. They want to increase it to seven hundred naira. Who we accept now? Ordinary boss. If you take boss from some Joko in the morning to Osho, it's five hundred naira. Now, if train now picks you from, from Ijoko for 700 naira to Oshodi, isn't that stupid mathematics? I don't think they themselves do survey. They don't survey what they are doing. They just wake up one day and say they want to increase price, ticket price. I was telling somebody that if they go on and insist that they want to increase it, all those people who live in this area who are going to maybe Ikeja, who are going to Agege, who are going to uh, what do they call the Oshodi, PWD, all of them will go and start taking bus. That means almost half of the passenger that they carry to Lagos will go to, to, to take buses to get to Lagos with 500 naira. While they are busy looking for people to pay them 700 naira. It is only people who are going to maybe Ido that we manage it. So, railway, you have missed it. You, you have played your penalty and it has gone over. It's over the bar. Your penalty is over the bar. So, let me come back to this issue of uh, Lagos State trying to increase uh, money of BRT. There's nothing bad in it, but you can wait one, one week or two weeks' time to increase it. So, Nigeria today, we are believing that everything will start coming. I congratulate those who collected their, their uh, certificate of return from INEC yesterday. All the governors, all the House of Assembly, honorable, congratulations, congratulations. You now have now the next thing is work. At the time they bring you in, ah, that reminds me, all these people who are making noise about uh, uh, interim government. What is interim government in democracy? Yoruba people used to say, desperate people, I want only, uh, if I do not get it, we throw it away, we destroy it. It's like in the days of Solomon, you know that woman who stole the other woman's child. 
And when they were asking who stole this woman's child, she they, they, they were denying, they were denying. And then Solomon said, Okay, let's kill the child. The woman said, Yes, let's kill the child. Let's kill the child. And Solomon said, Okay, the woman that did not allow us to kill the child, give the child to the woman. Many Nigerian politicians, followers of Nigerian politicians are like that woman. They say, Give us interim government. Don't hand over to Tinubu. You know, <laughs> they are destroyers. People who do not care about the welfare of Nigeria. We all knew what the military did to Nigeria. We all know what interim government means for Nigeria. It's not constitutional for us to have an interim government. It's not constitutional at all. So I want you to understand today that at times when they are making this noise, don't join them. Oh. They don't know what they are doing. Then secondly, those who are asking for, for this kind of government are treading on the constitutional uh, a, 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 a constitutional arrangement that is called treason. Treason is when you want to take government by force. You want to set aside the constitutional pro procedure for, for making a government. You want to enter government by force. They call it treason. It is called treason. All of those who are insisting that they want a, a, want a interim government when you have done election somebody has won the election and those who are complaining have gone to court what kind of interim government are you looking for again that's why it's very very important that nigerians should be wise especially those who are above 40 years old i expect common sense i expect them to to act with decorum there are some who are above 40 years old who are still behaving as if they don't understand that trouble does not pay them many of them do not even have the strength to walk from lagos to Idiroko border or walk from lagos to uh seme border the crisis is not a friend of anybody you can ask those who face a trouble in Ukraine when Wala burst and they started hitting uh, Kiev. A, a lot of them trek. I remember one of our pastors uh, in that place said they had to drop from vehicle and trek kilometers. Running, walking, running, they drop all their properties, all that they have worked for in 30 years. They left it behind. May you not suffer the same. So, common sense must prevail in Nigeria. Common sense. What did I say? Common sense. Tell somebody near your house that you should not join those who are saying if if we lose, let everybody lose. If we lose, let them let destroy everything. Don't join them. All those, especially those who are who are raising those Igbo versus Yoruba value, Yoruba versus Igbo. Look at that one saying he wants Igbo to do sit at home, sit at home in Lagos. <laughs> sit at home, go sit in the bush. They have been doing it in the East. There, what have they achieved with it? And now tell you, the hard-working people in Lagos do not to go to work on Monday. Where will that work? You try, just come to Lagos. They will crush you. You will be crushed. You will be crushed. Come to Lagos and try and want to start such a thing. They will crush you. We, Lagos has the concentration of the largest number of military locations. I grew up in Lagos, and I know what it means for you to say talking about military presence. In Yamba alone, we have we have the Mayon barracks. When you move a little bit away from Yamba towards Oju Elegba, the back of Oju Elegba, you have the Abati barracks. And gradually, as you keep going, you go to Island, it has like three barracks there. You go to Ekeja, there's a barrack. You go towards Oshodi, there's a barrack. You go to Ojo, there are barracks. If you go to Ekorodu, there's barrack. You go to Ekwe, barrack. You go to Soldiers are everywhere, Air Force people are everywhere, police barracks are everywhere. Now, if these nonsense people talking about sit at home on Monday should come to Lagos, they will be crushed. You cannot be giving order from the East to people in Lagos. It cannot work. You can't tell us to sit down on Monday and not to work. You see, even people in Ogu State who are living in Ogu State that work in Lagos, you can't tell them to sit down at home. Lagos is a productive place. You cannot be saying that rubbish. Now, now in the name of we are defending Igbo. Which Igbo are you defending? You are a criminal. And I believe that one day some of these governors in the East will wake up and deal with these boys decisively. Government machinery is stronger than a terrorist organization. It depends on their political will. So let me just drop that one. That one cannot work. All you sit at home on Monday in, in Lagos cannot work. You can't stay in uh, one somewhere in the east and start giving stupid order to people who are working very hard in Lagos. 
Forget tribal nonsense that you are using as an excuse. That one cannot work. Now, let me come back to pastors. It's time that pastors begin to settle down. Let them begin to settle down to do the right thing. Let pastors begin to settle down to say the right thing. We are supposed to contribute to the progress of Nigeria and not to start fanning the flames or fighting or abuses. Pastors are not supposed to be abusing leaders. The Bible told us we are supposed to pray for people and pray for leaders. That is what we are supposed to do. Not that we prophesying and prophesying and, and, and teaching rubbish that God did not send us. Now, let us settle down and teach and help Nigeria to grow. This is the time for Nigeria to grow. This is the time for Nigeria to grow. And every pastor, all those pastors who are trying to be popular by force, by fire, is not the time. This is the time to help Nigeria. People are just trying to come out of uh, this uh, uh, money changing, what do they call it, money confiscation uh, policy of uh, CBN. We are supposed to be sitting down in our churches teaching our people how to make money. How to pray, how to work hard. That's what we are supposed to be doing now. We are supposed to be addressing government to teach them strategies, things they need to do in our areas to improve our place, to help engage the youth. We know what we do to help children on Sundays. If you know how many people, many of responsible pastors are feeding on Sundays after service. You, you feed people, you give them money during the week, you help them. You are looking for connection to get them jobs. You are doing training to get them skills so that they can be employable. Let's tell government how to do it. We are not supposed to be fighting government. Ministers are not enemies of government. Ministers are supposed to be helpers of government. That is what we are supposed to do. And I want to call every well-meaning Nigerian parents, let's work together and build this nation. And my name is Reverend Oladi Smith, the senior pastor of Genesis Chapel International. Ijoko, somewhat Ogun State, Nigeria. I mean, Nigeria, I'm not even planning to jack back. De, 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 de. No, I'm not jacking back. I'm staying here and I'm going to help a lot of people. During the Easter, Easter uh, period, we are going to be doing a training for people on how to improve their income. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 4 p.m. Each day of the Easter period, that's on the 8th, 9th, 10th. We are training people to increase their income. We want to invite our youth and show them. Want to those who are working, some are working and their salary is nothing. How to go about it? That's what we are going to do. Thank you. Please share this, my post. Share it. Let people hear me. And God will bless you. Amen.